I'm Joe Funderburk. I'm a professor of entomology at the University of Florida. I'm in the Department of Entomology and Nematology and headquartered at the North Florida Research and Education Center. In this video, we're going to use the thrips of California, the lucid key and the thrips of California to identify a thrips. And we've clicked on identify thrips. Uh, and this is the, the page that we're on. Using this key, you'll see there's uh, features available and then features chosen. And in this, uh, in this box, we have all of the various species of thrips that are included in this lucid key. And the entities discarded, which I'll show in a moment, this will be the ones that we've decided we've chosen characters and those are the, the species that have been eliminated. There's various ways to use this key. I'm going to use what's generally considered the best, the, the best way pretty much through uh, but you can choose any character you want to of the uh, features that are included. Uh, here I'm going to go, well, it, it, it already has up the very first character, which is the abdominal segment 10. So I'm going to click on abdominal segment 10. And I think we know enough. about the morphology of thrips to be able to recognize which character to choose here. But uh, this is not tubular, but conical and female and longitudinally, longitudinally divided ventrally. So we simply will click on that. We will choose that. And you see when I do that, that it has in the entities discarded box, that it has discarded uh, 69 entities, and we have remaining 173 species. So again, I'm going to proceed with uh, this, this next best character. I'm going to choose that. And it has gone to the metanotum, metanotal median CD. So at this point, I'm going to move my specimen to the metanotum. and focus that. And I can see the character, but I'm going to go to higher power. Here we have the metanotum, and you can see what are the metanotal median CD. And the character is saying that these are arising on either the anterior margin, arising behind the anterior margin, are arising near the posterior margin. And here would be the posterior margin, and here's the anterior margin. And just in case you weren't sure of what you were looking at, I'm going to go over here and click in the key on an image. And it's saying arising behind the anterior margin. And that's what this looks like to me. So let's click on that, and you'll see we generate an image that indeed looks like our actual specimen. So if you're unsure of that character, you can, you can uh, one of the nice things about this key is for most of the features, there is a, uh, uh, an illustrated image to see that. But it's very obvious that it arises behind the anterior margin, and so I've chosen that. Now we have 168 species that have been discarded, and we have remaining 74 species 
that have those two characters that we've chosen so far. Next, I'll again go to the next best character. And I'm going to move the image so we all can see it. And you can see where it asks for the number of pairs of major posterior angular CD. Uh, there's quite clearly two. One here and one here. And so I'm going to enter that value of two. And we don't necessarily have to enter this other value, I don't think, but uh, it asks for the number of pairs of major CD on the anterior margin. And so looking at the anterior margin, I'm not seeing any major CD there. So I'm going to put a value of zero there. Now we have 35 species remaining in the key. I'm going over to choose the next best character to identify. And it's asking body color. I think it's quite obvious that uh, it's uniformly brown. Of course, one has to be very careful with material that has been soaked in, uh, and, and cleared. But this one is quite obviously uniformly brown. I might also point out, since I know what this species is in advance, that this particular species has a yellow form. It should not matter in the key. If your particular specimen is almost uniformly yellow, if you happen to choose that, it should not discard the species. So now I'm going to the next best character again. We're down to 22 species. And it's asking for vein CD length. In fact, it's asking for the vein CD length medially. And that's a little bit difficult to see at this magnification, but I think we can see it clearly enough. It's pretty obvious that uh, if we were to choose one, we would say between 0.3 and 0.5 of wing width medially. Based on experience, sometimes you get a little confused. Um, and if you're not sure in this case, if you would say, well, that looks a little bit more than half to me, you could go on to the next best character you see. You can click on that and choose the next best, but it seems clear enough, don't you think? So I'm going to choose that. We're down to nine species at this point. And by the way, this wing looks like it might actually be upside down, by the way it's mounted. Sometimes we don't have perfect specimens to work with, but it's still, we can see the characters well enough. The next best character now is paired campaniform sensilla. So I know those of you that are not thrip specialists, you probably have no idea what that is. But we're talking about the metanodal, or the uh, on the metanotum, and it's paired campaniform sensilla. You'll see in the key is we're talking about the metanotum. So I'm going to get our specimen and try to get in focus the metanotum. There it is. Looks like it's in focus. Now, I'm going to go back over to the key and I'm going to click on the image of, let's say present because I don't know what those are. And you'll see that these are little pore-like structures, actually mechanoreceptors, but they're in the metanotum, and that's where they're present. 
We can also click, click on the image where they are absent. And you can see in this case that we don't see them. So we seem to have our, our specimen, our own specimen, in focus here. And it's quite clear that they're not present. So we're going to choose absent. We're down to four species. The next character, next best character is discal seedy. We're talking about the abdomen. You'll see this is under the abdomen. So it's abdominal discal seedy. And we're talking about sternites three through six. And I think I needed to lower my magnification so we could see this. A little difficult to focus in and out on that, but those are the sternites here. And you can see that uh, even at this lower magnification, we don't see any CD, discal CD. Uh, there are some marginal CD on the sternites. So I'm going to say absent. And we're down to two species. So now I go to the next best character, and it says microtrichia presence on lateral thirds of tergites four through six. Very fortunately, we're already in that area. And when I do that, you can see this is a tergite. And here we are on the lateral thirds of the tergite, and you can see these, right, these rows of microtrichia very clearly. Thrips to bassi remaining. What I usually do when I'm identifying a species, which there's another feature in this key which is extremely useful. And you'll see I go over here and it says browse species. And I'm going to click on that. Because what I want to do is I'm going to browse species. And then we, we had thrips to bassi. So I'll click on the T, carry us down here to this, uh, all of the species in the key. And I'm going to click directly on thrips to bassi. And there's a page here of information about Thrips to Bassi with a lot of very useful information. Let's say that you were unsure of your identification for one thing and you want to verify. There's, so there will be more information. It'll have uh, additional comments about distinguishing features. It'll have comments about uh, ways to identify the male, what the males look like about variation. And for example, if we look at variation, it says adult females vary greatly in size and color from small and yellow to large and dark brown. It also will give you information about related and similar species. And one, you'll notice one of the things that it says in there, it says that Thrips to Bassi is unusual within the genus and lacking red pigment around the ocelli, and is usually easily recognized by the closely spaced rows of ciliate microtrichia on the plural tergites. So we happen to be in that area. So let's look at the plural tergites. and focus up and down, and there you go. Regular rows of microtrichia. There also are images on the uh, individual species pages. So if we still run sure of what we were looking at, you'll notice there's an image of the abdominal plural tergites. So we can click on that, and here you see these rows of microtrichia on the Plural tergite, and you can also see those microtrichia in this image on the lateral thirds of the tergites, abdominal tergites here.
You'll also see quite a bit of uh, important information on this page about taxonomic data, its current valid name, synonyms, family placement, common names. In this case, you'll see this thrips is often call, called the onion thrips. There's also some uh, biological information, host plants, uh, you'll also see here that this species is a confirmed vector of tomato spider wilt virus, which is one of the species of, of, of Tospo viruses. Uh, some information about crop damage, uh, distribution you'll see here that its area of origin is the eastern Mediterranean and its distribution is cosmopolitan, except for the wet tropics.